looking at the shadow of God, a place of emotional security. The shadow of God, a place of emotional security. So we looked at the heel of God, a place of vulnerability. We looked at the knee of God, the progression of intimacy. And today we're looking at the shadow of God, a place of emotional security. Song of Solomon, chapter two, verses three to five, it says, my lover is an apple tree, the finest in the orchard as compared with any of the other youths. I am seated in his much desired shade. Another translation says, I delight to sit in his shade and his fruit is lovely to eat. He brings me to the banquet hall and everyone can see how much he loves me. Oh, feed me with your love, your raisins and your apples for I am utterly lovesick. Uh, the shadow of God, it gives us protection in oppression. Whenever there's oppression, uh, we can run to the shadow of God. And the word shadow is a conventional Hebrew metaphor for protection against oppression. Thus, kings were referred to as the shade of those who were dependent on them for protection. And the Lord is a protective shade of his people. The Lord provides that protective shade uh, for us. Um, and that's what we can run to. Uh, Psalm 36 verses 6 to 7 says, You, Lord, you preserve both people and animals. How priceless is your unfailing love, O God. People take refuge in the shadow of your wings. And, and um, the wings of God are a place of covering. That's, that's, that's a place that we have in Christ. That's the benefit we have of being a child of God. Under his wings, we have a place of covering. All right. Uh, so the, the, shade of, the shadow of God not only provides protection in oppression, but it provides protection for nations. Uh, Deuteronomy 32 verses 8 through 12. It says, when God divided up the world among the nations, he gave each of them a supervising angel, but he appointed none for Israel, for Israel was God's own personal possession. God protected them in the howling wilderness as though they were the apple of his eye. He spreads his wings over them, even as an eagle overspreads her young. She carries them upon her wings, as does the Lord his people. And, you know, when we look at, when we study the arm of God and we study how the arm of God overstretches his people, it, it's just a beautiful thing to understand uh, the, the reach of the arm of God. Um, there's no distance that is beyond the reach of God. There's a song that we do, Olawag Bogborough. Uh, his arm can go to any length to reach his people. And we give God thanks for the arm of God. So the shadow of God provides protection from oppression. It provides protection for nations and it provides protection from enemies. It says, protect me as you would, Psalm 17, 89. Protect me as you would the pupil of your eye or another translation says the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings as you hover over me. My enemies encircle me with murder in their eyes. But God, we have from God a protection from the shadow of his wings. What a protection we have. And we give thanks. Psalm 61 verse 4. I shall live forever in your tabernacle. Oh, to be safe beneath the shelter of your wings. In 2 Samuel chapter 15, the account is given of King David and his entire household fleeing Jerusalem to escape his son Absalom, who had conspired against him. The whole countryside wept aloud as all the people passed by. King David was fleeing for his life when he wrote Psalm 63, which is a confession of longing for the security that the presence of God offers when deadly enemies threaten us. 
Psalm 63, 69, it says, I lie awake at night thinking of you. Why is he awake? Because of what he is faced with, because of the situation, because of what the, 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 the presence of enemies around, stalking, just being around and searching and seeking out. So he's lying awake, but he's thinking of God. He's thinking of how much God has helped him. He says, I think of how much you have helped me and how I rejoice through the night beneath the protecting shadow of your wings. You know, picture David lying under the stars, you know, on the ground with his men around, his family, his household, lying, you know, in the, in the dark of the night, in the still of the night. And he is rejoicing because he is saying that he's under the protecting shadow of the wings of God. I follow close behind you, protected by your strong right arm. But those plotting to destroy me shall go down to the depths of hell. In the midst of his predicament, David sought refuge under the protective shelter of God's wings. God sheltered David under his wings. And God is wanting to shelter us under his wings. But we have to take refuge in those wings. We have to come under the protective shade of those wings. So the shadow of God provides protection from oppression. It provides protection for nations. It provides protection from your enemies. And the beautiful thing is that it provides protection in marriage. Like, wow. It is interesting to note that in the first encounter that Boaz had with Ruth in this beautiful love story, Mention was made of Ruth being under the wings of God. In Ruth chapter 2, verses 11 to 12, when Boaz met Ruth, uh, he's, he said, yes, I know. I know about you, he replied. And I also know about all the love and kindness you have shown your mother-in-law since the death of your husband and how you left your father and mother in your own land and have come here to live among strangers. May the Lord God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge, bless you for it. So Ruth had positioned herself under the wings of God to find refuge under his wings. All right. So Ruth's loyalty to Naomi, her widowed mother-in-law, brought her under the protective covering or the protective shade of the Lord God of Israel. If Ruth, like her sister-in-law Orpah, had left Naomi, she would have forfeited this opportunity to be under this protective shade. When she made her declaration in Ruth chapter 1, verse 16, and treat me not to leave thee, nor to return from following after thee, for whither thou goest, I will go. Thy people shall be my people and thy God, my God. When she made that declaration, she brought herself under the covering of the wings of God. So sometime later, while they're there in Bethlehem, Naomi gave Ruth advice re getting married again. You know, she said, it's time for you to get married again. Ruth didn't tell Naomi it wasn't any of her business or that she had no desire to marry again. Let's look at Ruth's response. In Ruth chapter 2, verses 2 to 5. My dear, isn't it time I try to find a husband for you and get you happily married again? Ruth chapter 3. The man I'm thinking of is Boaz. He has been so kind to us and is a close relative. I happen to know that he will be winnowing barley tonight out on the threshing floor. Now do what I tell you to do. I want you to bathe, and I want you to put on some perfume and some nice clothes. Later on in this cycle, I'm going to come back to this matter of bathing and putting on perfume. We'll get there. And go on down to the threshing floor, but don't let him see you until he has finished his supper. And Ruth replied, I'll, all right, I'll do whatever you say. This was a point in Naomi's question about Boaz. Is he not our relative? So she reminded Ruth that Boaz was their family goel. 
Now, the Goel, oh. sometimes translated Kingsman Redeemer, had a specifically defined role in Israel's family life. The Kingsman Redeemer was responsible to buy a fellow Israelite out of slavery. Find that in Leviticus 25, 48. He was responsible to be the avenger of blood, to make sure that the murderer of a family member answered to the crime. He was responsible to buy back family land that had been forfeited, Leviticus 25, 25. And in Deuteronomy 25, verses 5 to 10, we see that the king's one redeemer was responsible to carry on the family name by marrying a childless widow. So in this, we see that the king's one redeemer was responsible to safeguard the persons, the property, and the posterity of the family. So Naomi asked, is he not our relative? So since Boaz was a recognized kingsman redeemer for the family of Elimelech, the deceased husband of Naomi and father-in-law of Ruth, Ruth could appeal to Boaz to safeguard the posterity of Elimelech's family and take her in marriage. It may seem forward to us, but it was regarded as proper in that day. So if Boaz did not fulfill this duty towards Elimelech, though he was now deceased, then the direct family and name of Elimelech would perish. So perpetuating the family name of Elimelech and every man in Israel was thought to be an important duty. These protective measures showed how important it was to God to preserve the institution of the family in Israel and that it is also important to him today. So Ruth accepted Naomi's advice wholeheartedly and without question made good on her promise. Boaz's response to Ruth also highlights how she honored Naomi. And so we wanna take some time to look at the response of both Boaz and Ruth in this account today, all right? And so in Ruth chapter three, verse nine, here are Ruth's words as she requested of Boaz that he would make her his wife according to God's law. She said, I am your servant, Ruth, she replied. Spread the corner of your covering. See that word covering over me for you are my family redeemer. What was Boaz's response? He said, thank God for a girl like you, he exclaimed. For you are being even kinder to Naomi now than before. Naturally, you would prefer a younger man, even if he's poor, you might have preferred a younger man. But you have put aside your personal desires. So he said in verse 11, now don't worry about a thing, my child. I'll handle all the details. This reminds me of the finger of God that takes care of the details of our lives. Boaz said, I take care of the details. Don't worry, I'll handle all the details. For everyone knows what a wonderful person you are. But he said, there's one problem. It's true that I am a close relative, but there is someone else who is more closely related to you than I am. He said, stay here tonight. And in the morning, I'll talk to him. And if he will marry you, fine. Let him do his duty. But if he won't marry you, then I will. I swear by Jehovah, lie down until the morning. So verse 14, she lay at his feet until the morning and was up early before daybreak because Boaz had said to her, do not let it be known that a woman was here at the threshing floor. And so he blessed her. He gave her a lot of barley to go back to her mother-in-law with. All right. So the wings of the garment of Boaz, the, the, the wings and the corners of the garment both signify protection. So as directed, Ruth uncovered his feet and lay down and she was there. In that day, it was understood that to be the role of a servant to lay at their master's feet and be ready for any command. So when Naomi told Ruth to lie down at Boaz's feet, she told her to come to him in a totally humble and submissive way. You know, don't go in there and, and claim your rights. You know, just stand up and say, you know, well, 
you have a right to be my kingsman redeemer no humble yourself and be submissive and you know just lie down at his feet so don't lose sight of this picture boaz was her kingsman redeemer and she had the right to expect him to marry her and raise up a family to perpetuate, perpetuate the name of Elimelech. But Naomi wisely counseled Ruth to not come as a victim demanding her rights, but to come as a humble servant, trusting in the goodness of her kingsman redeemer. And so she said to Boaz, I respect you, I trust you, and I put my faith in your hands. He will tell you what to do. So Boaz was, Naomi and Ruth had a chance to get to know Boaz and they knew what kind of man he was, a good man, a godly man, one to whom Ruth could confidently submit. In the marriage relationship, many husbands wish they had a wife who submitted to them the way Ruth is being told to hear. But do they provide the kind of godly leadership, care and concern that Boaz showed towards Ruth and the others. In the marriage relationship, many wives wished they had a husband who loved, cared, and treated them the way Boaz did towards Ruth. But then do they show the same kind of humble submission and respect that Ruth showed to Boaz? The conduct of Boaz calls for the highest praise. He did not attempt to take advantage of Ruth. He did not disdain her as a poor, destitute stranger, nor did he suspect her of any ill intentions. He spoke honorably of her as a virtuous woman. He made her a promise, and as soon as the morning arrived, he sent her away with a present to her mother-in-law. Boaz made his promise conditional because he knew that there was a kingsman much nearer than he who had the right of redemption. So in addition to her loyalty, Ruth's obedience to Naomi, her widowed mother-in-law, brought her under the protective shade of Boaz. Boaz said, Ruth, I have acquired as my wife. So if you go back to chapter one of Ruth, Ruth seemed to be giving up on her best chance of marriage by leaving her native land of Moab and giving her heart and life to the God of Israel. But as Ruth put God first, he brought her together in a relationship greater than she could have imagined. And today, God will bless those wanting to get married in the same way if they will only put him first. All right. Ruth's loyalty to Naomi brought her under the protective shade. Of the, of the God of Israel. And Ruth's obedience to, Boa, to, to Naomi brought her under the protective shade of Boaz. And Ruth's obedience to Boaz removed the shame from Naomi in providing a son that would carry on the family name of her dead husband. Both Ruth and Boaz were selfless. They submitted to the requirement of the day. And so in Ruth chapter 4, verses 9 to 10, then Boaz said to the witnesses and to the crowd standing around, you have seen that today I have bought all the property of Elimelech, Chilion, and Marlon from Naomi, and that with it I have also purchased Ruth the Moabitess, the widow of Marlon, to be my wife, so that she can have a son to carry on the family name of her dead husband. As the Lord made Boaz a protective wing over Ruth, here is an example of the role of husbands in marriage. And we find that in Ezekiel 16, verse 8. The Lord said, later I passed by. And when I looked at you, I saw that you were old enough for love. And I spread the corner of my garment over you and covered your naked body. Covering, protection. I gave you my solemn oath and entered into a covenant with you, declares the sovereign Lord, and you became mine. Husbands, as you submit to Christ, your role is to protect your wife. Your degree of covering is an indication of the degree of your love for her. Let's look, remember Joseph. Joseph sought to end the engagement with Mary discreetly. 
and he spent time trying to find ways in which it could be done without bringing harm or shame to her. Her well-being was his concern. Jacob, when faced with the possibility of facing an angry brother, sent servants on ahead with gifts, but he kept Rachel and Joseph behind to cover them. Wives, you need to accept and lovingly receive your husband's covering, but this entails obedience and loving submission. So how did Boaz cover his spouse? How did Boaz cover Ruth? There are six things I want to say. One, he did not misunderstand her intentions. He knew her character. He was assured of her love. And so irrespective of what her actions were, he examined her actions through what he knew of her. He knew her. Secondly, he used his words to bless her. He did not tear her down. He said, thank God for a girl like you, for you are being even kinder to Naomi now than before. So he didn't put her down. Thirdly, he was responsible. He said, I'm going to follow through with all the details that need to be taken care of. Fourthly, he was transparent and he did not withhold information from her. He didn't hide it from her. He didn't keep any secret from her. He said to her straight up, Ruth 112, he said, there's one problem though. Yes, I love you and I know you love me, but there's a problem. It's true that I'm a close relative, but there is someone else who is more closely related to you than I am. And he was a man of principle. You know, he was willing to say, okay, yes, though I love you, if he decides that he wants to marry you, then so be it, let him do his duty. So um, he was a man of principle. Fifthly, he did not leave her hanging, but he promised that he was going to follow through on her request of him. He made a promise. And sixthly, he made good his promise. Whatever it took, he covered her. He exercised wisdom. He was shrewd. He was invested in the process. How did Ruth accept Boaz's covering? Because as, as long as, you know, the covering can be there, but, you know, if we don't accept it, then it, it, it's, it's not of any value to us. So how did Ruth accept this covering? One, she submitted to his covering. She lay at his feet until morning and was up early. If Ruth had not submitted to Boaz's covering and decided to shift her position from his feet, the covering would have been compromised and she would no longer have been covered by the corner of his garment. Secondly, she was obedient to his instruction. He told her to wait there and don't let her be seen. She, she, she was obedient to his instruction and it is in obedience that the blessing comes. And thirdly, not only did she submit to his covering, not only was she obedient to his instruction, but thirdly, she waited patiently for him to do what he needed to do. She did not interfere with the process. Irrespective of their feelings for each other, there is a way that things had to be done. And she waited patiently for him to do what he had to do. In a marriage relationship, there is authority from Christ to the husband and from the husband to the wife. The authority of Christ is the authority of God. Any man who speaks with God or about God in a way that shows a lack of respect for the authority of Christ dishonors Christ. In the same way, a wife who speaks with God in a way that shows a lack of respect for the authority of her husband dishonors her husband. Worse, she dishonors herself. I intentionally selected this photo and you would have seen it yesterday when we looked at the knee of God because it gives us an additional understanding that the authority that we submit to serves as a covering. And when we reject or disrespect that authority, we walk out from under that covering and we expose ourselves to the raindrops of stress. For example, we taught our children that disobedience carries with it its own reward. So when you disobey, you walk out from under the covering and we can't protect you. 
when we say stay inside until we get back home and you disobey and you go outside and you play and you fall down and you get scrapes and bruises, you don't have to come and beat them. You know, all you have to do is show them that what they have done is expose themselves to the enemy because they walked out from under the covering. And when your children understand that basic principle, they will not easily disobey you. The same is true for the relationship between a husband and a wife. The wife wants to go somewhere with friends and the husband says, no, I don't think you should go today, another time. But guess what? You already made your plans to, have a go, and, to go and have a good time. You already put things in place. Actually, you weren't even asking permission. You're just informing him, right? So you defy your husband's wishes. And what happens? You go, you have stepped out from under covering and you expose yourself to things that can happen. You, uh, you know, your, your car can get broken into, stolen, some other mishap. It is, it is such a dangerous thing to walk out from under covering. If we would understand the concept of covering, the covering of those in authority, the covering of our leaders, the covering of our husband, you know, we would, we would, be, more, we would be more careful about the decisions that we make to reject the authority that we have, the authority figures that we have in our lives. Covering is a very serious thing. So there's, there's, there's a phrase that I've been saying and I want to continue to use it again concerning the institution. Nothing is wrong with the Lord's institution of marriage. Absolutely nothing wrong. God designed it and we've heard day one, two and three. God designed something great and it is still great. It is an umbrella that works, but only if you open it up when it needs to be opened. You have to use it according to the manufacturer's design. The Lord designed the institution of marriage as a covering, a shelter, a shade, protection for all who desire to come under its shade. Let us not allow the enemy of this institution to shift you from under this covering. Sometimes he will use pain, Sometimes he will use rejection, disappointment, hurt, abuse, discontent, unmet expectations, unforgiveness to encourage you to make the choice to move. But then when you do move from under the covering, then you have to deal with the rain in addition to your issues. So stay under the covering of the marriage covenant. Stay under the covering. Stay under the wings of God. It is a place of covering. And under this place of covering, you will be kept safe from the rain of adversity, the rain of stress. You stay safe under the wings of God, a place of covering. And so prepare our hearts for prayer. Let us just listen to this song as we prepare our hearts before we go into a time of prayer for our marriages. God bless you richly. Of in, in marriage. So, Lord, we bless your name today. We bless your name today. God, we give you all the glory and the honor and the praise, oh God, because truly, indeed, when the ocean rise and thunders roar, God, we, oh God, we have a safe haven. We have a, oh God, we have a place, oh God, where we can find shelter from the storm, Lord God, when, oh God, oh God, where there seems to be conflict, where there seems to be contention, where there seems to be, oh God, no conversation, Lord God, we know that you care for us so that we can come to you, oh God, hallelujah, who is the, oh God, our Redeemer and our Savior, who is our Father, Lord God, and our God, oh God, and the so tonight, Father, we pray for, oh God, marriages today. In the name of Jesus, we bring, oh God, marriages before you. Oh God, some that are hurting, some are, that seem to be, oh God, on the brink of disrepair, God. But, oh God, some who feel that, oh God, that their, 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 their differences are irreconcilable. Father, we come against the lies of the enemy tonight. We come against the whispers of the enemy tonight. We come against, 
oh God, the, that which the enemy have sown in the lives, oh God, of, of couples today that, that, that feel that, that have them feeling that God, that there is no way out, dear God, that this is the end. Lord, today we declare, God, that the lies, oh God, shall be no more in the name of Jesus. We bring an end, oh God, to these thoughts, dear Father, in the name of Jesus, dear God. We break, oh God, hallelujah, the message of the enemy, God, and his emissaries in the name of Jesus, hallelujah, that, 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 that says that there is no hope, but God, today there is hope in you. Oh, Lord God, that there is hope in you, Father God. We praise you, God, that there is hope in you. And we may not, and we will not be ashamed because, God, you are faithful, you are true, and that God, and you have brought, oh, God, the works of the enemy, oh, God, you have made an open show of them, oh, God, uh, it, when you died on the cross, uh, hallelujah. So today, Father, we pray for, oh, God, hallelujah, the minds, oh, God, of, 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 of couples today, Lord God, uh, that they will bring every thought into subjection in the name of Jesus, that they will bring every thought into the into your obedience, dear God, so that they can be liberated, so that they can be made free, so that they can be healed in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, for every struggling home today, every struggling marriage today. Oh God, even those that seem so busy that they can't be coming, they, they're coming together seems to be a task. Lord God, I pray that they will, oh God, that they, they will find that you would show them the way, God. The way, oh God, of, of, of being, uh, oh God, uh, of finding healing. The way of finding, oh God, hallelujah, life again. I pray for the restoration of homes and marriages and in the name of Jesus and life. I speak life to marriages again, God. I speak life and that more abundantly, God. I pray, oh God, for the time before, oh God, the restoration of that courtship, God. The restoration, oh God, when each other meant everything to each other, dear God, in the name of Jesus, dear God. Father, there are things, oh God, that has confronted them. There are things that have confronted marriages today that are bringing, oh God, uh, hallelujah, uh, the pain and the suffering and, and wedges that have come, oh God, to, to, to divide. But we declare your word that says what you have put together, no one, no situation, nothing, oh God, shall put it asunder in the name of Jesus today. Lord, I, I, I pray. God, that 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 lady today, that she would know, oh God, that there is hope in you, and what you have put together, we declare, it shall not, oh God, be separated. It shall not be put asunder in the name of Jesus, God. That Hallelujah, that she would rise, that that couple will rise, oh God, and be healed in the name of Jesus today. Lord God, we praise you, Father God. We praise you. Oh God, we pray, Father, that your oil will begin to flow again, God. Hallelujah. Breaking the yokes, yes, God. Breaking the yokes, oh God. Breaking the yokes, oh God. But oh God, bringing healing as well in the name of Jesus. Bringing healing, oh my Father God, in the name of Jesus. Bringing hope again and life again in the name of Jesus. I pray that, oh God, that they would find the fortitude and the stamina, oh God, not to give up, oh God, not to stand down, oh God, not, oh God, to, to oh God, to, to, to lay it aside 
in the name of Jesus, but that they would hold on to what your word declares. I pray for a change in culture, a change in thinking in the name of Jesus, that we will no longer, oh God, adhere to the culture of the world and worldly concepts and worldly thinking. My God, in the name of Jesus, a free mind, oh God, from that which I've been, that, that which I hold on to worldly thinking there, God, in the name of Jesus. I pray that there, there'd be, oh God, uh, uh, holding on to the, the culture of heaven, my God, the culture of heaven in the name of Jesus, the culture of heaven, that we would have the mind of Christ tonight, that we would have the mind of Christ in the name of Jesus. So God, that hallelujah, that we would live accordingly, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, oh God, for every marriage, oh God, every couple, Father, that is, oh God, represented here today. And, and we speak life to them. We speak a blossoming. We speak, oh God, good success. Oh God, that our, we as men will bring our spouse into our banqueting house. Let there be that banqueting again. Let there be, oh God, that banqueting again. In the name of Jesus, let there be that banqueting again. Oh God, let there be. Father, even where finances seems to be little, Lord God, let there be that banqueting again in the name of Jesus. Let there be, oh God, that celebration again. Let there be, oh God, life again in the name of Jesus. We declare it, God. We declare it. We declare it in the name of Jesus that it shall live and not die. We speak it shall live and not die, that your marriage shall live and not die in the name of Jesus. We declare it our God, and it is so in the name of Jesus, that in, even in the morning, that there shall be change, that there shall be change in the name of Jesus. I pray for you today, that you to anoint his clothes, to anoint his clothes, to anoint the place where he sleeps, and, and, and break the spirit that bring the vision amongst you. I pray for you today that you will take time just to anoint the place where he sleeps and the clothes that he wears and, 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 and declare the purpose of God and bring the spirit that is bringing that the vision in your life. And so we free you today. We free you today in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you God, we bless your name and give you all the glory and the honor as we thank you that for healing and restoring marriages in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord God Almighty. Hallelujah. 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 Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus, for you are the Lord God Almighty. Father, we thank you, God, for marriages, God. God, you have instituted it from the beginning. And God, so tonight, God, we bring marriages before you, God. And God, I declare, God, that the covenant, God, that has been made in marriages, God, will not be broken in the name of Jesus. But God, that couples, God, will once again review the covenant with each other, God. And Father, that they will understand, God, what they, the, the commitment, God, that we have made with each other, Father. And God, that we will begin to live the life, God, that 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 the words have been spoken in the covenant today god so god i declare god that that the word spoken god will become a reality god in the name of jesus so tonight god i speak life to couples i speak life to marriages god that have forgotten the covenant, God, that has been made. I speak life to marriages, God, where, where the promises set on, on, on a marriage, on a wedding day, God, have been made and they have forgotten. God, tonight, I speak life to marriages in the name of Jesus, that the covenant will be, God, re revised and reviewed 
and refresh God and Father that their their God emotion. God will once again, God, be restored, God, that the love for each other, God, will be restored in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, God, for restoration, God, of emotional security tonight, God. Oh, God, that the wife, God, will be able to rest, God, in a husband, God, that a husband, God, will be able to rest in the wife and God together, God, that, that God, they will find emotional security and emotional support in each other. I pray, God, that they will not look outside, God, but God, they will continue, God, to find that rest, to find that peace and to find that joy in each other tonight. In the name of Jesus, I pray, God, that their emotion would not stray, oh God, because of situation, because of conflict, God, that would arise, but God, that they will be able to sit and communicate, God, with each other, oh God, so that emotional attachment and that emotional security, God, will not be lost tonight. In the name of Jesus, Father, we bless you, God. I pray, God, that a husband will understand God's role of God, protector of his wife tonight, Father. Oh, God, that he will protect her, God, through his knowledge, God, of her father. Oh, God, that he will know his wife, God, that he will know his wife, and God, that he will dwell with her. Uh, according to knowledge and so God that he will protect his wife God Father from evil words from negative words God from negative intentions today Father from negative emotions today Father oh God I declare God that husband's heart God especially in the in this pan pandemic time that husband's heart God will once more God be returned to the why, oh God, that his heart, God, will, will be, God, restored. God, God, that, that his heart, God, will reach out towards his wife, God, in the name of Jesus. And Father, he will bring the level of comfort, oh God, that the wife need, God. He will bring the level of comfort and security, God, that comes, God, from the marriage, God. I pray tonight, God, that the excitement that brought them together as husband and wife, Father, oh God, it will not be lost but God I pray that that level of excitement oh God in, our, in couples life will remain today God will be restored today Father will be renewed will be refreshed in the name of Jesus oh God as positive words God as spoken by the husband I pray God that he would not become fed up and he would not become frustrated because of situation but God that he would understand his role God as priest God he will understand his role God over his, his wife God in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Father I pray God for transparency tonight God that there will be openness God in marriages tonight Father oh God that a husband God will hide nothing from his wife God I pray God that a wife will hide nothing from the husband but together God there will be transparency there will be openness God in the name of Jesus I come against the spirit of fear God that would cause one another Another not to want to say anything in the name of Jesus. I come against that spirit, God, that will cause God, God, that, 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 that buckling up God and that, that withdrawing and wanting to say nothing. But God, in the name of Jesus, I declare, God, that once again, we will understand each other and we will dwell with each other according to knowledge, Father. Oh, God, that we will be able to communicate with one another, God, and we will say yes we will 
open up God our heart. We will open up our emotion. We will open up our lives once more, God. Oh God, so that the oneness, God, that has been created within this marriage will not be lost tonight, God. I declare, God, that oneness, God, that has been God created, that has been instilled in us, God. Father, it will not be lost in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, that communication, God, will be open, God, will be open, will be open in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, they will speak, God. Oh, God, there will be one language tonight, Father, in the name name of Jesus. I pray, God, that a wife, God, will learn to submit to the husband, God, as the authority, God, in the house, Father. Oh, God, that wives will submit to their own husbands, and that husband will love their wives, God, just as you love the church, and you give yourself tonight, Father. I declare, God, that husband will love their wives and they will give themselves that nothing will be too much, God, that nothing, God, will be too difficult, God, that nothing, God, will be within reach, God, nothing, God, will come between husband and wife tonight, Father, oh God, as they learn to love each other, oh God, as they submit one to another, oh God, as they sit and decide to build their marriage once again in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus oh God we pray for transparency tonight God we pray for transparency tonight God in the name of Jesus we pray for that level of freedom God freedom emotional freedom today God mental freedom God oh God social freedom God in the name of Jesus oh God that freedom that will draw them together God that will draw them that will draw them physically oh God that will draw them emotionally God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, that there will be openness today, Father. There will be openness, God, in our marriage today, Father. Oh God, as we work together, oh God, as we work together, oh God, to come continue with the covenant, God, that we have made with each other and the covenant that has been established between us and God in the name of Jesus. God, we will not look to the left nor to the right, Father, but God, we will keep our mind stayed on you, and we will keep our mind focused on you, God. We will keep our mind on each other, oh God, as we build each other in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I declare growth tonight in marriages, God. I declare restoration of joy tonight, God. Restoration of joy tonight in marriages, Father. Restoration of joy and rejoicing, oh God. God, let there be happiness in homes. Let there be harmony, God, in homes. In the name of Jesus, because God, you, God, have refreshed and you have restored marriages. You have restored joy, God. Oh, God, the presence of the Lord has been restored tonight, Father. We say thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for healing of marriages tonight, God. Healing of mind, God. God, healing our spirit, healing our body, oh God. Thank you for healing God marriages tonight and making marriages whole in the name of Jesus. Oh God, thank you for healing tonight, God. Oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Oh God, and restoration, God. We say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Father, oh God, for restoring, oh God, the institution of marriages today, God, in the church, in the nation, in the world today, God, restoration, God, that 
happiness, God, and joy, God, will be restored, God. Oh, God, that we will live a better, that our community and our nations will be better places, God. Our family lives will be different, God, because, God, you have heal our marriages. You have restored our marriages. You have restored God, a meaning God of our covenant with the God that we have made with each other. You have restored transparency within us, God. You have restored God, our, our link of communication, our network, God, together. And so God, once more, you have brought a oneness, God, bone of bones and flesh of flesh, God. And that oneness today, oh God, and I pray, oh God, that we will continue to dwell with each other according to knowledge. Oh God, that the husband will once more know the wife. The wife will once more know the husband. And together God, the emotional security will be reestablished, God, creating the joyfulness and the harmony and togetherness that has been lacking in the name of Jesus. So God, I say thank you tonight for you as a healer and you as a restorer of marriages tonight, God. Oh, God of couples, God, peace in the name of Jesus. So, Father, we say thank you. We say thank you. We say thank you for doing it, God. And we bless your name for you as a Lord God Almighty who bring all things together. Oh, God, you, God, are the God that keep the God, the marriages together. And we say thank you, God, for looking in God and looking over our couples and looking over marriages and keeping the unity, God, in the bond of peace. And we say thank you for doing it, God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm.